on section 6.5 uh, we're going to cover determinants and Kramer's rule which Kramer's rule is another method that, that I'm going to show you and the last one of how we can solve a system of linear equations with either two variables or three variables now uh, before I go into the determinants one thing that I do want to mention about Kramer's rule just like I mentioned on the previous section on the inverse method is that you can only solve a system of linear equations using Kramer's rule if the system has a unique solution. Okay. So this method is only for unique solutions, meaning when you only have one solution in the system. If you have no solution or infinitely many solutions, this method is not going to work. So we're going to have to use something different such as Gauss-Jordan elimination, Gaussian elimination with back substitution, or the addition method. And or substitution, of course. Now, uh, let's go ahead and start with the determinants. What's a determinant? A determinant is the, basically the value of a matrix. That's what we call it. Now, to find the value of, that, of any given matrix, which is a determinant, uh, we're going to start with the two by twos, two rows by two columns. Uh, a determinant is represented by the absolute value bars. So that means a determinant of the matrix. Okay? Now, to find the determinant, all you got to do when it's a 2 by 2 is that you're going to multiply these two values in this diagonal right here, A1 times B2, and then the formula says that you're going to subtract the multiplication of these two values in this other diagonal right here. <coughs> and that should give me the value of a 2 by 2 determinant. Let's work on two problems here on 2 by 2 determinant. So we're going to do a uh, difficult one. So we're going to evaluate the determinant of the matrix. Okay. So this is a, you know, a determinant of fractions. One third, two thirds, two sevenths, and two sevenths. So what we have to do is, again, the formula says that we're going to multiply these two values in this diagonal, which is one-third times two-sevenths. And then we are going to subtract the product or the multiplication of these two values in this diagonal right here. So we're going to subtract the product of two-thirds times two-sevenths. So this is going to give us uh, one, thir uh, one third times two sevens. One times two is two. Three times seven is twenty-one. So it's two twenty-one minus two times two is going to be four over three times seven, which is twenty-one. So two twenty-one minus four twenty-one is going to be negative two twenty-one, and this is the value of this determinant. <coughs> I'm going to show you. Um, very quickly how you can find the solution using the graphing calculator, how you can find the value of the determinant. Okay, that can also be done. Okay, so this is what you gotta do to find the value of the determinant in the calculator. You go to second matrix, <coughs> then you're gonna go to edit. You're going to press enter on edit and you're going to put the dimensions, which is a two row by two column. Then we put the values one third, two thirds, and then press enter every time you place a value, two sevenths, and two sevenths. Second quit to get out to go to the main screen, then you're going to go back to matrix, second matrix. But now you're going to go to math in the middle. And you see that number one says DET. DET stands for determinant. So click enter one time in that. And then you're going to go to second matrix. And you're going to press enter on the matrix that you edited. Close the parentheses. And it gives you this value, which if you want to make it into a fraction, press math and enter twice. And it gives you negative 2 over 21. Now, let's go ahead and find the value of the following determinant. Now we got these two by two determinants that consist of variables, that consist of x's. 
Now, on this one, we cannot evaluate it with the calculator in any way. Why? Because the values are not numbers, they are variables. Okay, so that we have to do it strictly by hand. So we're going to multiply these two numbers in this diagonal first, which is x squared times x cubed. That's what we're going to do first. x squared times x cubed, which is going to be x to the fifth power. And then the formula says minus, and then you're going to multiply these two numbers in this diagonal. 9 times x squared, which is going to be minus 9x squared. Now the question is, can I combine these two terms? No, so that means this is my final answer. Just make sure you simplify this expression as much as possible. So my determinant is going to be in terms of x, the value. Okay. <clears throat> now, the next topic that I'm going to cover here is how do you find the value of a 3 by 3 determinant? Now, this is one of the methods that we can use to find the value of a 3 by 3 determinant. There will be two different ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you, first of all, with this method right here. So the first method that you have, that you can use to find the value of a 3 by 3 determinant is this. You're going to rewrite the first two columns on the side, at the right side. So the A1, A2, and A3, which is my first column, and my second column, which is B1, B2, and B3, I'm going to rewrite them on the side then what you have to do in this one is that you're going to multiply these three values in this first diagonal. And that's what you see right here. Then you're going to multiply these three values in this second diagonal of three right here. And that's what you see right here. Then you're going to multiply these three values in this third diagonal right here. And that's what you see here and the results for those three diagonals, you're going to add them. Then, to finish this, now you're going to go backwards. Now you're going to multiply these three numbers in this diagonal going back. And that's what you see here. Then you're going to multiply these three values in this diagonal right here. And that's what you see here. And last but not least, you are going to multiply these three values in this diagonal right here, and that's what you see right here. And what are you going to do with those three diagonals? You are going to subtract them. And that gives you the value of a 3 by 3 determinant. So this is one of the methods that you can use to find the value. <clears throat> now, the second method that you can use to find the value of a 3 by 3 determinant is what we call the cover-up cover method. Now, what this method requires you to do is that you're going to pick a row or a column, and I'm just going to go through the easiest possible case, which is in order for us to keep this same format or this same setup, is what I do recommend is that you're, you're going to start by picking one row or one column out of your matrix. Now, you can pick either row or either column, and I will suggest with the exception of the second and the second. So that way we can keep the exact same format that we see in the formula. Okay? So if you use this row or this column or you use the first row or you use the third column or you use the third row, it's going to be the same exact format that you see in the formula. The formula tells you that in the middle you see the only difference is that you're going to have a minus in the middle. That will be the only thing. Okay? So, um, the explanation is you, it's, it's basically done with the first column. As you can see, what you have to do first is that you have to break this down into three values, right? Now, there's, each one of them is being multiplied by a 2 by 2 determinant. Now, how do we find each of those 2 by 2 determinants? It's a very simple process. Now, the first value is an A1 on the outside. So the 2 by 2 determinant that will be multiplied by that, it's, you can find it by doing this. You're going to cover uh, with the row and the column where that A1 is located, so which is in the first row and the first column. And you're going to be left with these four values, and that's exactly what we see on this determinant. Now, we can continue the same way. The second value is A2, which is the middle one here. 
what I need to do to find the determinant right next to it that is going to be multiplied times that is going to be by covering the middle row which is where the A2 is and the first column where the A2 is and that leaves me with these four values which is the determinant that you're going to multiply times A2. Now the last one is A3. Now if I want to find the determinant that will be multiplied times A3 I need to cover up the row where the A3 is and the column where the A3 is and that leaves us with these four values and that's the determinant that will be multiplied times A3. And then you find these two by two determinants which I explained how you can find them on the previous part of the, of the section and whatever you get multiply times A1 times A2 times A3 and then you're going to add these two and subtract the middle one. Okay. So the middle one is always a minus, keep that in mind. Okay. So let's go through uh, the, the first determinant here. We're going to evaluate this determinant 555, 333, negative 1, 3, and negative 4. We can also do it in the calculator, but I'm going to show it to you by hand. So, what you need to do first is that you, you need to pick a row or a column with the exception of the middle one so we can keep the same setup. Okay. So, I'm going to pick in my explanation for this problem, I'm going to pick the top row. So then we're going to start like this. So we're going to start with the 5 and then the determinant that will be multiplied times 5, we can find it by covering the first column where the 5 is and the first row where that 5 is and that leaves us with 3, 3, 3, and negative 4. The middle one is always a minus, remember? So then we're going to have the second value which is a 5. Then for this one, once again, we're going to cover the row and the column where that middle 5 is, which is in the middle column and the top row. And that leaves us with 3, 3, negative 1, and negative 4. The last one is going to be a 5, so we're going to put a plus 5. Just remember, only the middle one is minus right here, plus 5. And then the determinant right next to that 5 is we're going to get it by covering the top row where that 5 is and the third column where that 5 is. And that leaves us with the 3, 3, negative 1, and 3. <coughs> and that works whether you pick any row or any column to do this breakdown. So now we are going to find these values. Remember to find the value of a 2 by 2 determinant is we multiply the diagonals and then we subtract them. Right? That's what I'm setting up right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and begin. This is 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 minus 3 times the 3 it's going to be a 9. Next, 3 times negative 4, it's going to be negative 12. Minus 3 times negative 1, it's negative 3. And next, 3 times 3, it's going to be a 9. Then it's going to be minus 3 times negative 1, it's negative 3. And then we're going to uh, simplify it and find the value. To finish this, we have 5 times negative 12 times negative 12 minus 9 is negative 21 and 5 times negative 21 is negative 105. Now right here minus 5 times this changes to an addition symbol so negative 12 plus 3 it's a negative 9 times the negative 5 it's going to be a positive 45. Then plus 5 times this changes to a positive also 9 plus 3 it's going to be a 12. 12 times 5, it's going to be a positive 60. So then if we add those values right here, negative 105 plus 45 is negative 60 plus 60 is going to give me a 0. So the value of this determinant is going to be a 0. <coughs> Next, now let's find the value of this determinant. 
this determinant contains excess. So keep in mind what I what I told you on the previous on one of the previous questions is that you need to you're gonna get an expression in terms of x. We're just gonna have to make sure we simplify it as fully as possible. Okay. And this type of determinants they cannot be done in the calculator when you have variables in it. So first thing is that we need to pick a row and, and a column. And I do suggest that if you see a zero anywhere in your determinant, you use the row or the column that contains the zero because that's going to make the process easier and shorter. Okay, so I'm going to be using the top row and you will see why it's going to be easier and shorter in just a bit. So let me do the breakdown. We're going to have the three determinants here. So the first thing is this. We're going to start with x, which is the first value that I picked there. And to get the, the determinant that will be multiplied times x, I need to cover the co first column where x is and the first row where x is. And that leaves me with x, x squared, x, and 1. For the second one, it is a 0. But remember that the middle one is always minus. But then we have a 0. Okay. And then for that one is we're going to cover the top row where the zero is and the middle column where the zero is. And it will be multiplied times this determinant. 2, x squared, negative 2, and 1. And the last value, you see it's a negative 2. It's a plus negative 2, which I can just leave it as minus 2. Now, on this one, the determinant for that negative 2, we're going to cover the top row where the negative 2 is and the third column where the negative 2 is, and that leaves us with 2x, negative 2, and x. Then we know what's going to happen here. We're going to multiply the diagonals and subtract them. Multiply the diagonals and subtract them. Multiply the diagonals and subtract them. So the first one, x times 1, it's going to be x, minus x squared times x, it's going to be x cubed. Now, the next one, I want to talk about the next one just for a little bit. As you notice, there is a 0 that is being multiplied times this parenthesis, which means what? That no matter what we get inside of this parenthesis, the answer is going to be 0. That's why I told you it is always best and easier if we pick a row or a column that contains the number 0. Now, the third one, we have, let's multiply these two values in this diagonal. We got 2 times x, which is going to be 2x, <coughs> minus negative 2 times x, which is going to be negative 2x. So, one thing that we can do here is that we can combine like terms. You see this is minus, well, that changes to a plus. 2x plus 2x is going to be a 4x. So, what we need to do next to simplify this expression is that we need to distribute this outside number on the outside of the parentheses. So x times x is going to be x to the second power. x times x negative x cubed is minus x to the fourth power. And negative 2 times 4x is minus 8x. There's nothing that can be combined in this problem. There's only one thing that we can do, and that is rearrange the terms in descending order. So negative x to the fourth plus x squared minus 8x. And that would be the solution for this determinant. Next. Now I'm going to show you the main... Uh, well, before we go into the Kramer's rule, so I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to do that at the end. Let's do these last problems here. Let's say, let's do this one. Or both. Solve the following equation for x. Okay? They want you to find the value of x on this equation. So we already know how to work this out when it's a 2 by 2 determinant. What we have to do is multiply these two values in this diagonal negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8, and the formula says minus, then we multiply this diagonal, which is 7 times x, and that's 7x. So it's negative 8 minus 7x equals negative 50. So what I need to do is, this is just a linear equation, I just need to solve for x. So 
So we're going to move the 8 over to the other side. So we get negative 7x equals to negative 42. And then we divide both sides by negative 7, and that gives us x equals to positive 6. And that is my value of x. Let's do the same thing for this problem. Solve the following equation for x. So what would be the easiest thing for us to pick when we're evaluating this determinant on the left-hand side? Either use this column because it has a zero, or use the bottom row because it has also that zero. So I'm going to use the first column. So when we do the separation, Remember that we are supposed to, first of all, we're going to start with the 1. The determinant right next to the 1 that will be multiplied times 1 is that we're going to obtain it by covering the top row where the 1 is and the first column where the 1 is. And that leaves us with these four values, 1, 2, negative 1, and 2. Next. The second value that we see here is a 4, but remember the middle one is always minus. So now we're going to have the 4, and then the determinant right next to the 4, we can obtain it by covering the middle row where the 4 is, and the first column where the 4 is. And that leaves us with x, negative 2, negative 1, and positive 2. And finally, to get the last one, it is going to be a plus 0. To get that determinant, we're going to cover the bottom row where the 0 is and the first column where the 0 is, and that gives us x, negative 2, 1, and 2, which, in fact, we already mentioned on the previous problem. It doesn't matter what that last determinant gives us, because when I multiply times this 0, it is going to give me a 0 as an answer. And it tells me right here that the value of this determinant is equal to negative 4. We want to find the value of x that will make that equal to negative 4. So let's solve for x. Now, we're going to multiply the diagonals and subtract them. This is a setup for those two. And the last one is a 0. I don't need to write it down. Okay. So multiply the diagonals. 1 times 2, it's going to be a 2. Minus 2 times negative 1, it's going to be a negative 2. Then the next one, x times 2, it's going to be 2x. Minus negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then what we have to do is solve for x. So right here this becomes a plus. So 2 plus 2 is going to be a 4 times 1. It's going to still give me a 4. What do I do with this parenthesis? I need to distribute the 4. So that gives me minus 4 minus 8x. And then negative 4 times negative 2 is plus 8. And that equals 2 negative 4. Then to solve for x, we're going to combine the like terms, which in this case we have 4 plus 8, that's going to be a 12. So we get 12 minus 8x equals negative 4. We subtract the 12 from both sides, and I'm going to continue it up here. So it's going to give me negative 8x equals negative 16, and then we divide both sides by negative 8 and that gives me x is equal to positive 2. And this is the solution for x that we need to put here. It has to be a 2 so that this determinant equals to negative 4. <coughs> the last topic of section 6.5. The last topic of section 6.5 is going to be Solving systems of linear equations using Kramer's rule. Which, like I told you, Kramer's rule can only be used when having a unique solution, meaning one solution on the system. Is there a way that we can find out if the system has no solution or infinitely many solutions? Uh, yes, but not specifically which one of those two is going to be. All I can find out is if the system has either the no solution or infinitely many solutions. I cannot find out which one of those two is going to be in any particular case. Okay? And that happens if the determinant d equals to zero. So I'm going to talk about these determinants in the next slide. Okay? 
First of all, I'm going to give you the formulas. Now, according to Kramer's rule, in order for me to find the value of x, y, and z, if there's a z also in the system, is going to be the determinant. x is equal to the determinant of x divided by the determinant d. y is equal to the determinant of y divided by determinant d. And z is equal to the determinant of z divided by determinant d. Now, what is the determinant of x, what is the determinant of uh, y, what is the determinant of z, and what is the determinant of d? That's what we're going to see next. So, first of all, we're going to start with the determinant d. The determinant d consists of the coefficient determinant, meaning that it's going to be the determinant of the coefficients of the variables x, y, and z. So let me bring something back right here so you can see. This is my original system of equations. So if we take a look to this, um, the determinant d consists of the numbers in front of the x's, the y's, and the z's. That is my determinant d, which we call it the coefficient determinant. Now. Look at the determinant of x, determinant of y, and determinant of z. There's only one little modification that we have to do to find each one of them, and that is the following. To find the determinant of x, all I have to do, I need to substitute the constants on the right-hand side of the equation. I need to replace it for these x values in my determinant d. In other words, you see that those constants replaced the a1, a2, and a3, which were my original x's. And this determinant will be give me the value of my determinant of x. Likewise, if I want to find the determinant of y, all I have to do is substitute or replace the constant values from the right-hand side into the values of original values of y. We're going to replace the original values of y, which is these three, b1, b2, b3. We're going to replace them with the constants. That's how we find the determinant of y. Everything else stays the same. And how do we find the determinant of z? If there is a z, the determinant of z can be found by substituting or replacing the constants for the z. The z's were the c1, c2, c3, these three on the top. So if I replace those constants right here, that's going to give me the determinant of z. And don't forget, to find the values of x, y, and z, all I have to do is divide the determinant of the de determinant of x divided by the coefficient determinant that gives me x, determinant of y divided by the coefficient determinant that gives me y, and determinant of z divided by the coefficient determinant that gives me the value of z. And it only works it only works if the determinant I mean the if the system has a unique solution. We will know right away that it, that it doesn't work if this determinant right here, d, is equal to zero. If that d gives me a zero, then that means that we cannot solve it with Kramer's rule. We will have to use something different. If that determinant d is not zero, then you can use it. Okay. Let's go ahead and work with a simple question before we go to the top one. So we're going to start with this problem. Use Kramer's rule to solve the system or determine that the system is inconsistent or contain dependent equations. Okay. First thing that we have to do is that we have to put this system of equations in standard form, meaning AX plus BY equals to C. You see that the first equation is not in that format and the second equation is not. So what we have to do is move the 3y over to this side and move the 2y, my negative 2y over to this side. It's just going to change the signs. So this is going to be a 5x and that 3y becomes minus 3y equals to 1. Second equation is 6x and that minus 2y if I move it over to the other side becomes plus 2y equals to 18. Now, based on what we see here, my determinant d is going to be the coefficient determinant, which is 5, negative 3, 6, and 2, which is the determinant of the coefficients, the numbers in front of the x's and the y's. Now, the determinant of x can be found by replacing 
the constant values, which is a 1 and the 18. Uh, we're going to replace the x's, which is a 5 and the 6, those are my x's, with those constants 1 and 18. And the y's are going to stay the same, negative 3 and positive 2. And to find the determinant of y, we're going to do the exact same thing, but in this case, we're going to replace the values of y. The values of y are negative 3 and 2. We're going to replace them with the constant values, which is 1 and 18. Okay. So the 1 and the 18 will be replaced right here. And the x values are going to stay the same as the originals, which is 5 and 6. Now, to finish this, to find the value of each one of these determinants, what we have to do is we have to do the formula. For 2 by 2 determinants, we just cross multiply the diagonals and subtract them. 5 times 2 is going to give me a 10, and then the formula says minus, and then we multiply this diagonal, which is 6 times negative 3, it's a negative 18. And then that minus negative is going to change to a plus sign, so 10 plus 18 is going to give me a 28. So that's the determinant D. Next one. To find the determinant of X, we're going to again cross multiply the diagonals and subtract them. 1 times 2, it's going to give me a 2. The formula says minus, and then we're going to multiply these two numbers in this diagonal, which is 18 times negative 3, it's negative 54. And then that changes to a plus again. 2 plus 54, it's going to be a 56. Last but not least, multiply these diagonals and subtract them. 5 times 18 is 90, and then the formula says minus, and then we're going to multiply this diagonal. 6 times 1, it's going to be a 6. So 90 minus 6 is an 84. Now, according to Kramer's rule, to find the solution to the system, this is what Kramer's rule says that in order for me to find the value of x, I'm going to divide the determinant of x divided by the, the coefficient determinant d, and the determinant of x is 56 divided by determinant d, which is 28, so this tells me that x is equal to 2. Now, to find the value of y, we're going to divide the determinant of y divided by the coefficient determinant d. The determinant of y is going to be 84 divided by the coefficient determinant d, which is going to be 28. 84 divided by 28, it's going to give us a 3. So that means that y is equal to 3. And so, we can say that the solution for this system of equations is going to be the point 2, comma, 3. And like I told you, it is a unique solution, one solution. Now we're going to answer this last question. We're going to find the solution, use Kramer's rule to find the solution of the system with x, y, and z. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is that, it, well, it is already in the desired format. It is in the format ax plus by equals to c. Well, in this case, we have three variables, x, y, and z, but it is already set up. So what we need to do is find the determinant d, which we call the coefficient determinant. That would be 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 5, negative 4, and then 5, negative 3, and 0. Then I'm going to set up the rest of them. We also need to find the determinant of x. The determinant of x can be found by uh, just replacing the constant values right here for the x values 2, 1, and 5. So those three are going to be replaced with the constants. So those constants become 12, 38, and 22, and everything else is going to stay the same. Negative 1, negative 5, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 4, and 0. Now, to find dy, this is the next thing, determinant of y, what we have to do is we're going to replace the constants again, but for the y values. The y values are the negative 1, negative 5, and negative 3. So these three in the middle will be replaced with the constants, which is 12, 38, and 22. And everything else is going to stay the same as the original determinant d, which is 2, 1, and 5 right here, and this 3, which is negative 1, negative 4, and 0. And last but not least, 
to find the determinant of z, what we have to do is we need to replace the constant values, which is those same three, 12, 38, and 22, for the z values, which is negative 1, negative 4, and 0. So these three are going to be replaced with the 12, the 38, and the 22. Everything else is going to stay the same as the determinant d, which is the 2, the 1, and the 5 right here. And these three, which is the negative 1, negative 5, and negative 3. Then what we have to do next is find those values of these three, of these four determinants, and we will finish the problem like that. Now what I do suggest right here is that we use, uh, let's say for example, we can use either the bottom row or the third column. It is up to you, and the reason is because he has a zero. That one is going to be a lot easier because of the zero. <coughs> so on this one I'm going to use that, on this one I'm going to use that, on this one I'm going to use that, and on this one, we can use whichever one, you see, because there's no zeros. So you pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to pick the first one, the first column, because I think that one is a lot easier. Okay? So for the first determinant D, I'm going to start with the 5, and then the determinant right next to 5, we're going to cover the row, the last row where the 5 is, and the first column where the 5 is. And that leaves us with these four values, negative 1, negative 1, negative 5, and negative 4 negative 1, negative 1, negative 5, and negative 4. The next one, remember that the next one is always a minus. So we're going to have a minus, but the, 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 the value is a negative 3. So minus a negative 3, that's going to change to a plus right here. And then the determinant right next to this one, we can obtain it by covering the row where the negative 3 is, which is the last row, and the column where the negative 3 is, which is the middle column. And that leaves us with 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. So once again, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. And what about the 0? Remember, we can just ignore it because that's going to become a 0. So I'm not going to write it down. Okay? The next one, we, we're going to start with the 22. And then the determinant right next to the 22, we need to cover up the row and the column where the 22 is, which is the first column, and the last row. And that leaves us with negative 1, negative 1, negative 5, and negative 4. For the next one, it's on negative 3, but remember the formula says it's minus for the middle one. Minus a negative 3, which again, it's going to change to a plus 3. And the determinant for this plus 3, it's, we're going to cover the row where the negative 3 is in the column, which is the last row, and the middle column. And that leaves us with 12, negative 1, 38, and negative 4. So once again, 12, negative 1, 38, and negative 4. And what happens with the 0? That one we don't have to do it because it's going to become a 0. Third one, we're going to start with the 5. And then the determinant right next to this one, we're going to obtain it by covering the row where the 5 is and the column, which is the t last row, but the first column. And that leaves us with 12, negative 1, 38, and negative 4. So once again, 12, negative 1, 38, and negative 4. For the second one, remember it's always a minus for the middle. And then it's a 22. For that one, we're going to cover the row and the column where the 22 is, which is the last row, and the middle column. And that leaves us with 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 4. And what happens to the 0? It just not counted because that's going to give me a 0. Last but not least, now on this one there's no zero, so on this one I just pick whichever. I pick this one because I think it's easier, 2, 1, and 5. So I'm going to start with the 2, and then on this one we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to cover the row where the 2 is, which is the top row, and the column, which is the first column. And that leaves us with negative 5, 38, negative 3, and 22. So once again, negative 5, 38, negative 3, and 22. Now, the middle one is always going to be a minus, right? And then the middle one is a 1. 
Now for the determinant of the 1, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cover the middle row where the 1 is and the first column where the 1 is. And where that leaves us with negative 1, 12, negative 3, and 22. So once again, negative 1, 12, negative 3, and 22. And the last one is going to be a plus 5. For the determinant of a 5, then we need to cover the last row where the 5 is and the first column where the 5 is. And that leaves us with negative 1, 12, negative 5, and 38. So once again, negative 1, 12, negative 5, and 38. And then we're going to evaluate those determinants one by one. So we're going to start with the top right here. So this one at the top is going to give me 5 times and then we're going to multiply and subtract the diagonals. Same thing here, plus 3 times and then we're going to multiply the diagonals and subtract them. Okay. Same thing on this one, it's going to be 22 times, we're going to multiply the diagonals and subtract them and then plus 3 times and then we're going to multiply the diagonals and subtract them. Same thing here, 5 times and then we multiply the diagonals and subtract them minus 22 times and then we multiply the diagonals and subtract them. Same thing here, 2 times mul the multiplication of the diagonals and then we subtract them, minus 1 times the multiplication of those diagonals and then we subtract them and then plus 5 times the multiplication of these diagonals and then we subtract them. So let's begin with the top right here. So negative 1 times the negative 4 is going to be a positive 4. Minus negative 1 times negative 5, it's going to be a positive 5. Now the next one, 2 times negative 4, it's going to be negative 8. Right here, minus, and then we have negative 1 times the 1, it's going to be a negative 1. So let's find that value. 4 minus 5, it's going to be negative 1. So 5 times negative 1, it's going to be negative 5. Now, negative 8 minus negative 1 means negative 8 plus 1, that's a negative 7. And then 3 times negative 7, it's minus 21. Then negative 5 plus negative 21, it's negative 26. Now, the next one, let's do the same thing for the next one. We're going to multiply these diagonals and subtract them. So negative 1 times negative 4, it's going to be positive 4. Then we're going to have a, once again, a minus, right? And then we're going to multiply these diagonals, which is negative 1 times negative 5, and that is going to be positive 5. The second one, 12 times negative 4, it's negative 48. Minus, then we got a negative 1 times 38. Negative 1 times 38 is negative 38. So that's going to change to a plus right here. So negative 48 plus 38 it's going to be negative 10. But then that multiplied times the 3 it's going to be a negative 30. Right? Now for this one 4 minus 5 is negative 1. But then times the 22 it's going to be negative 22. So if I add them negative 22 plus negative 30, it's negative 52. Next one, multiply the diagonals and subtract them. 12 times negative 4, it's negative 48. Minus, then negative 1 times 38, it's negative 38. So that's going to change to an addition symbol right here. So and then negative 48 plus 38 is negative 10. Right? And then that multiplied times 5 is going to be negative 50. The next one, we're going to multiply these two diagonals and subtract them. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Minus negative 1 times 1 is going to be negative 1. So that's going to change to an addition symbol. So negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7 and then that multiplies times negative 22. So if I multiply negative 22 times negative 7, the answer is going to be 154. So negative 50 plus 154 is going to be 105.
4. Next, now we're going to do the last one. Same thing. Multiply these diagonals. Negative 5 uh, negative 5 times 22, that's going to be negative 110 right here, minus, and then these two diagonals, let me just put it here. When I multiply 38 times negative 3, that's going to be negative 114, yeah, negative 114, and that changes to a plus right here. So negative 110 plus 114, it's going to be 4, right? and then times 2, that's going to give me an 8. Next one. Multiply these diagonals and subtract them. So negative 1 times 22, it's negative 22. Minus 12 times negative 3, it's negative 36. So then that's going to change to an addition symbol right here. So negative 22 plus 36, it's going to be a 14. But then multiply times the negative 1, it's going to be a negative 14. Then the last one. Multiply these two diagonals and then subtract them. So negative 1 times 38 is negative 38. Minus 5 times negative 12 is minus 60. That is going to change to an addition. So then negative 38 plus 60 is 22, positive. And then that multiplies times the 5, it's going to be 110. So then what we have to do is combine those values. So we have 8 minus 14 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 110 is 104. Okay. So we found all the determinants that we needed to find the solution for this system. According to Kramer's rule, remember what we're going to do next. Kramer's rule tells you this, that in order for me to find the value of x, I'm going to divide the determinant of x divided by the coefficient determinant d. Determinant of x is negative 52. If I divide it by the determinant d, which is negative 26, that's going to give me x is equal to 2. Now, to find the value of y, we're going to divide the determinant of y divided by the coefficient determinant d. The determinant of y is 104 divided by the determinant d, which is uh, 20, negative 26, yeah, negative 26, that's going to give us y equals 2, negative 4. Okay. The next one, to find the value of z, we're going to divide the determinant of z divided by the coefficient determinant d. Determinant of z is also 104 divided by the coefficient determinant d, which is negative 26, so once again, z equals to negative 4. So the solution for this system of equations is going to be the order triple, 2 comma negative 4 comma negative 4. And this completes this problem. This is the conclusion and the end of section 6 on uh, 6.5, which in the new book, it is going to be called 9.5, Determinants and Kramer's Rule, section 9.5.